Hey everybody, uh, so we have success. I finally got this thing to trigger. Um, didn't take too much of an effort, but it uh, it took a bit longer than what I thought because um, when I was uh, trying to figure out how the um, trigger interlock worked, I actually had the um, connection from the the high voltage pack back here. I had that disconnected from the main board um, just to make it safe for myself because I actually had to have it um, armed um, and charged while I was uh, uh, looking around it so I didn't want any risk of it actually um, triggering so uh, but anyway that turned out to be a bit of a silly thing to do because I didn't see a load of voltages that I should have seen but anyway that's beside the point um, all it was is uh, there was a one pin on the port had five volts on it and I basically had to just um, connect that to ground just pull it low um, which was um, effectively the um, safety switch which is on the standard coil which you have to hold with your finger or thumb when you actually hold it to somebody's head and then you press the trigger or use the um, air foot switch. So um, I've uh, ripped off the, uh, the connector which is no longer needed um, and I've just wired in a coil here you can see that just here um, so I've got this charged up to 10%, uh, wait well, it's not actually charged now, if I charge it, it's now ready, and trigger it, hopefully you can hear that, I've just got it set on a bit of aluminium just to, um, to give it something to react against, um, I don't want to turn it up in my lab because I've got computers and all sorts of things here, um, so I don't want any risk of uh, damaging them with uh, stray magnetic field. So um, I'm going to go have a play um, and see what I can do. But anyway, great news. Um, you're probably going to see more of this um, very shortly. Okay, powered on. I'll go for 30%. Charging, turning up the power, 40%, okay, this is uh, 35%. Right, so there you go. It does work. Um, this is uh, my little setup that I made. Um, I've basically ripped out the um, the old connector on the front here. Um, it's given me a bit more room in there and I've just bolted up some wires to the output. Pretty simple really. Um, so I've got this set up where I can just sort of screw some random stuff. I only did this quickly just to try it out really. So I've got that. Um, in parallel I also have this coil that I made um, just to provide a bit of inductance so I've just got that there just to uh, give the SCR and the capacitor a uh, bit of an easier time uh, but it doesn't seem to do uh, do too badly so uh, thoughts for the future um, my initial thought is not to turn this into a can crusher or something like that because it's probably not really powerful enough for that, especially if I can't get um, the full power out, output out of it. Um, at the moment it tops out at about 200 and something joules, so it's not really enough to do that um, unless I can um, figure out how to turn the power up. Um, in which case it would probably go up to about 700 and something joules, I think, on full power. Um, so my initial thoughts were, if given that I've got such fine control over this, I can actually, you know, down at uh, one or two percent, it's actually only charging the capacitor to, you know, about 50 volts or so. So um, it's really, really low power. So I'm wondering whether I could actually put certain things on the rig and actually um, pop them without causing too much of a flashover. Um, so I can get them to um, self-destruct um, 
throwing bits everywhere, but without too much of a flashover. And that would allow me to have a play around with this. Um, some of you might recognize this. I, this was a, a video that I did um, a while ago now. Um, this is a, uh, an air gap flash unit. So this means I can take high speed still photos. Now, given that the MagStim actually has a trigger output and this has a trigger input, um, I should be able to link the two together um, with my little timer thing that I built for, for the PAL flash. I should be able to get them together, destruct a component and get a still photograph of it in the process of being um, of disassembling itself. Uh, so that might be quite cool. I'll have to have a play with that. I'll take um, I'll take quite a bit of setting up and playing around with really. But uh, so that's for the future. Um, another thing that I might want to play with is actually the uh, the purpose that it was designed for, which is the magnetic stimulation. Um, I haven't quite convinced myself to stick a coil on my head yet, but I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a try. Maybe I'll try it on one of my arms or something. I've actually um, already st started having a play around with making some coils. So this one um, took me a couple of hours to make while I was watching the telly. So it'll be interesting to see that one does. This one's a it needs a few more turns on it really. So uh, I might do another one. It's times like this, you wish you had a 3D printer because I could make a nice former for that, but there we go. Right, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm really happy this is up and running now. Um, it's all bypassed. I'll probably uh, put some of the details and some photographs and stuff of what I've done onto my blog. Um, the link to that will be in the description. And um, That's pretty much it. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. See you later.